all right guys welcome back to the channel i hope everyone is doing well today thanks a lot for tuning in shout out to all the subscribers as always really appreciate it and gratitude to anybody new this video we're going to be covering the butcher we're going to be talking about nikita zoo it's a little film study that i've done i've been analyzing his style his punch technique, you know, what he, I, what I think he's good at, where I think there's imp improvements to be made, and what I think he does really well, because there's a lot of stuff he does that I think there's a lot of potential for. So, let's get into the video. <laughs> Preserves the order of things. Left and right for Alan Zoo! It's a massive shot! Liver! Leg! The tongue! The kidneys! The stomach! The heart! The heart! <laughs> What'll it be then? Ribot sharp, potentially, but. Oh! That's kind of hook, Nikita. Loin or shank! Well, Biggs, Biggs has become. So, hope everyone's doing well today. Thanks a lot for the people that are requesting this video. There was a few of you that in the comments section over the, the previous videos I've made on Tim Zoo and his dad, um, that were requesting about a video I could make on his son, uh, or his brother, sorry. So, here it is today, and you know, it took me a, a bit longer to get to it, and I think it's supposed to be a couple of weeks ago, but nonetheless, we're here now. So, Nikita Zoo, look, very, very strong man, okay? He actually started boxing a lot younger, and he had he won several uh, amateur tournaments. I don't, it doesn't say specifically on Wikipedia, but he had a fairly um, decent amateur background as a kid, right? And then he quit boxing at the age of 16 and picked it back up when he was 23. So he's clearly got some things he still learned from when he was younger that, that he's bringing out now. And, and, you know, he's still a little bit raw but he has got a very interesting style he can really fight obviously we know that he's got guts big time he's got a lot of heart he's got power in both hands he's extremely strong he's great on the inside he's got a vicious body attack his body work which we'll get into might be some of his best um certainly one of his best punches which i'll get into he's got a pretty good jab actually he's got a very good jab it's a little inconsistent which we'll talk about but He's got some really tremendous upper body movement as well. For me, I think his concentration lacks a little bit and his defensive responsibility lacks a little bit. It sounds a bit like his dad, <laughs> which if if um if you're interested, I, I made a, a documentary, a, well, film study documentary about uh, like father like son, whether Tim Zhu fights like his dad. I'll leave the link up here. Check that out. But. He does have some lapses in concentration. He drops his hands a little bit and he comes walking in in the mid-range and gets tagged. And to be honest, he does get hit a bit too much. Um, and those are the main reasons why. But in terms of his punch technique, it's pretty good, right? So let's start with his jab. That's what preserves the order of things. Fear. So I'm going to just, as I talk, I'm going to just show you some clips and, you know, you can check out the footage as I'm speaking. But his jab, Southpaw, he's a Southpaw, he's st stocky, excuse the train, he's coming by as I talk, but it's, it's a stocky jab, you know, he's a stocky guy, sorry, and he's got a sturdy jab, especially that jab to the body. You know, where he can leans in and I'll pause the frame right here where you can see the technique that he's exhibiting is quite good. You know, he's got his whole body through it. He's, you know, not overreaching too much. And the jab to the body is a thing of beauty. Although, um, this is one of the things that I'll talk about, which is called a punch tell. And sometimes he, he has a slight punch tell where he has actually been counted off of it. He can also counter punch, which we'll get onto. But um, if you look here, 
the first jab to the body he lands, I think, um, I forget the guy's name, Driggs or Briggs. I'll put it up on the screen uh, just to make sure I'm right. But he lands a beautiful jab to the body in the first round. It's really, really powerful and well executed. And the technique is actually perfect, really. And then as he's doing it again in the second round, so his opponent times him, right? Because there's just, he, sometimes when he comes in, a, a criticism I would have is he can be a bit, a bit slow with the offtake, right? And the punching tell is just a slight movement or a slight notification to your opponent that you're about to punch and it makes it easier for them to counter punch you but on this one and then Sean Porter actually picked up on something that Zoo does what as a southpaw he'll duck his head to the side in line but on this occasion his head actually got punched <laughs> into the line and he got dropped from big Zoo le lean right into that punch you see the big right hand land right there and you know he's been dropped a, a few times and you know hit clean and he got dropped after that but the jab to the body essentially i'll show you some more clips as i'm talking because he's he's his jab in general and i say his consistency lacks a little bit which is which is natural for a fairly you know i don't want to say novice because he obviously had a, an amateur background but but he's still young in the pro game so consistency is something that will be developed but uh, as I'm talking, like I said, I'll show you the, just the, 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 the beautiful technique he has. He gets his whole shoulder, right? And he keeps his opponent at the end of his punch. And w on top of a jab, right? He variates the jab nicely. He's got a beautiful up jab, right? An up jab, because he, he, he often he'll deploy this shoulder roll, which I personally don't love. <laughs> oh, you got a murderous rage in you, and I like it. An up jab is from this Philly shell, right? The shoulder roll is a move from the Philly shell, but an up jab is basically that. It's a very difficult punch, right? Because you're using a lot of trajectory. You're going against science because you're going up against gravity like that, right? And he shoots it, bam, like that, really beautifully. And he can do it and it creates a different angle. But what else, What another thing he does really well is he'll lean in, right? He's got excellent upper body movement. Really surprised me when I look a little bit closer because his fluidity, upper body like that, is is excellent. And a lot of times he'll do it and he'll come over to the side and he'll shoot a, what is called a vertical jab. Now, a vertical jab is, I'll do it, I'm not a southpaw, so I'm gonna switch. So a normal jab would be like that, right? So if you can't get the, if the gloves are tight like this and you're jabbing like that, you can't get the thing through, your fist through the glove, you just turn it like that, bam, and you get it through because of the circumference, I guess, is tight, is uh, smaller. And fighters do that. And he can do this, come in here, and he'll shoot up jabs like that. It's beautiful. And it's, it's, it's another weapon and it's another angle that he uses. But he also, the same notion, has an absolutely wicked uppercut. Uppercut is a beauty from Zoom. Over, it's over. From the same pose like that, he'll come over, upper body movement, get his head off the line and shoot a devastating uppercut. It's really impressive. You know, his upper body movement is superb. It could be superb. It's very good. I don't want to, you know, superb is a high, high, <laughs> it's very good, but um, very fluid, you know. So, great jab. Up, up jab, he can variate, as I mentioned, many angles. And, you know, he's got that killer uppercut with his upper body movement. He's got a nice backhand, okay? Have a look, look at some it. of the highlights. <laughs> look as well. And there's blood all over the, the butcher. River chop, loin or shank. That left hand, which he shoots, and I'll, I'll show some shots right now. He puts his whole shoulder through it, and he shoots, and it's sturdy, right? His power, you can just see, it's like a thick, hard power. And boom, like that, he'll get his whole, turn his whole wrist over like that. If you're talking about scientifically, right, there's something called a kinetic chain, which is the an, an alignment of your joints, where the power and the energy flows through your body, from your feet, through to your body, through to the tip of the tip of the knuckle and keeping your punch at the end of the keeping your opponent at the end of your punch is boom maximum power so he's extending that full arm getting all that energy throwing flowing through his body and hitting his opponent in the face with it <laughs> so that's where the, a lot of the power comes from 
And I'll show you a picture right now of a perfect kinetic chain, and that is Naoya Anue, the, the Japanese featherweight champion. Well, he's not featherweight, ban bantamweight, super bantamweight now, 122. Um, this, that, that shot that he landed against, um, I think it was Fulton. You can just see just his whole turning of the body, all the back muscles are, are all connected to each other, the, 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 the lower back muscles coming up to here to the pecs and turning and culminating to just a devastating fashion. And Nikita Zhu can do that. And he does it effortless, effortless, effortlessly. <laughs> and it's just, boom, a sharp, sharp lead right back, uh, left hand to the face. And it's, it's, it's a gorgeous punch, but, he has a little bit of inconsistency with it, which is a pattern for for me anyway. Again, all these opinions are just my own. You're welcome to throw yours in in the comments. I'd love to hear from somebody. I'd love to hear from any opinion if you have it at all. You know, let's just enlighten each other. But basically, he's got great punch selection, okay? But the consistency, I think he just loses concentration from time to time. And just kind of, you know, my criticism with is he just aimlessly walks into that mid-range, dropping his hands uh, a lot. Keeps his head on the line a lot, so he gets tagged with right hands. He's he's a little easier to time because, look, his upper body good movement is good, but it's, it's a little easy to time because it is like a little predictable, like this, right? If you're going to use upper body movement, you've got to time. Mix it up a little bit and, and not be so predictable. And I'll show you some clips right now where he's just moving and if you're coming this side you know the you know the head's coming this side if you're over here and you're on your way back here i'm i know your head's gonna end up here so i'm gonna punch there it's simple stuff really but he gets timed quite a lot because it because i think his his energy and his rhythm is too much of the same you know it's like this a little bit too methodical but Sometimes it works and sometimes, like to his counter, let's talk about his counter punching ability because that is actually very underrated too, I think. He's actually a pretty good counter puncher, you know. He, he'll, he'll do pull counters. A pull counter um, is like if someone's throwing a jab at you and I can slip and counter. A pull counter is going backwards and coming over the top. And he does that, which takes athleticism, it takes timing, it takes agility, you know. It, it, it's, you know, it's, his his mobility as well is pretty good <laughs> it's really good and uh, sometimes it gets a bit sloppy like i said the consistency could use working but ultimately uh, it's you know it's very impressive he's got a very impressive set of tools on him one of if not the most impressive punch for me check this out right his his left uppercut to the body is vicious that's a beauty from nikita zoo Gets that left hand away. Well, Biggs, Biggs has me covered. And he does it in his technique on this. I'll break it down, or I'll try to. It's kind of unexplainable, really, because of how good it is. And when he's holding his opponents and he's up close like this, he's got his hand up here. I'll show you some clips right now. He does it several times, and I've noticed it. I'm like, that's his best punch, especially when he's up close. The, he, the amount of leverage and power he's able to get from up here to down here to shoot right into and the accuracy as well to devastating effect is quite remarkable if you are up close and you're an opponent against nikita zoo you're going to lose <laughs> you're going to lose all right there's no way because he's tough he's strong he's durable even though he's been dropped and hurt a few times i still think he's got a half decent chin to be honest with you he did um you know he been hurt a little bit and it's a bit concerning against domestic level so i don't know fully but like i think he's taken some shots he got headbutted in one fight which was you know um he recovered from that and got i think he got dropped soon after but basically i think his chin's all right but like he's a, if you if you're up close with him on the inside you're probably done because his body work is pretty epic he can got power in both hands right but that most impressive shot, if he's got his hand up here, he'll hold, he'll try and hold your head here, a bit of head control with his other hand, which is smart boxing. He'll hold his opponent to maneuver, and then boom, he'll crack you with that, that left hand. On top of all that, we know he's got a ton of heart. You know, that little preview I made with the Gangs of New York clips in it, which I like to bring in a bit of an artistic twist. You know, heart, he's got no heart. He's got all the heart, bro. That was a bad impression. <laughs> the heart, the heart, the heart. The 
This boy has no heart. But sometimes, you know, fighters like this, they actually, they've got too much heart, really, in the sense that you can never have too much heart. But what I mean is, you know, you don't need to, to, to go to that situation there. But I think you, basically where I'm going is, I wish he'd box a bit more. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I wish he would use his jab a little bit more, you know? But, and also when he's jabbing, use the defensive responsibility, right? Bow, like that, get your head off the line when you're jabbing like that, Bow, step back a little bit. Instead of just, you know, walking down and he'll just stay in the mid lane with his head on the line a little bit. I wish, you know, he could just think a bit more. He has this um, attitude and desire to, you know, seek and destroy, which is great, it's great. But if he just mixed it in with his um, boxing more, he could be so much better, I think. And maybe he will. It's still early days, but I'm gonna, this clip I'll show you with his brother. And this was at, a, at the end of a fight or end-ish of a fight, but this kind of sums it up for me because his brother's like vicariously trying to get him to copy him <laughs> with this. Like, he's like, you know, I'll show you the clip now. Hands have gone down from Stalin. Now he goes down himself. Set it up! Hands up. Smart! Hands Set up. it up! Hands up! But that to me sums it up and it's like, you know, because Tim Zhu's very intelligent and he's very smart and calculated whilst being aggressive. And I think if Nikita did some of that too, not just when he's finishing fighters, because that's obviously when you're trying to get somebody out of there, you open yourself up. You are, you're open to being opened up, <laughs> basically. So... Being a bit more smart and then a bit more like uh, concentrate a bit more and just, you know, just box a bit more and just don't aimlessly go through these patches of just walking your opponent down and walking into the mid range and getting timed because, you know, he could be, he's really good. I've got, I've got a lot of hope for him in terms of being high up there because when I watched him a few times, I wasn't totally sold him. I think I was thinking to myself, hmm. If you're going borderline life and death with domestic level fighters, that's a problem. You know, you're getting dropped by these guys, you're getting hurt, you're coming back to win, which is great in itself, don't get me wrong, but as you step up the ladder and you step up the levels, you know, that typically isn't a good sign. And, you know, you're going to get found out with someone that can punch harder or there's someone that knows not to engage or can outbox you or outmaneuver you or outthink you. And that's boxing is this, not this. And he fights with this. If you could just reverse that a little bit, <laughs> you know, like, or maybe get them 50-50 box a little bit more, use his jab and use his, he's got some beautiful rhythm. He really does. I don't think he should use the shoulder roll as much. I think he should just commit to the style, keep your hands up a little bit more, use the jab, be defensive, be defensively responsible and not go through these lapses of concentration. So much easier said than done, especially the concentration part, because that is a big part of boxing, you know, as the, as the rounds go on, fighters do have lapses of concentration, which can hurt them. But ultimately, I'll, I'll do a summary quickly. A lot of potential here, obviously, because when you have a heart check, that is a massive part of it. When a fighter's got a lot of heart, it's just a great thing. But, you know, you, you need that in, in reserve. You don't need to bring it out in every fight. It's there. Use your boxing. Use your jab. You've got a beautiful jab. Try to get rid of the punch tails. If I was a coach, <laughs> and maybe I should do a little section after I do a film study. If I was a co if I was coaching him, I would get those punch tails. For example, right? If I'm here like this and I move this and then jab, you're gonna see that more than that, right? If I just jab you like that, you're gonna see that less. You're gonna have less time to react, and hence you're gonna be able to land more effectively without getting timed, basically. So I would work on his punch tails, I would work on his footwork a little bit, his step back game, get in and out a little bit. You know, there, there's a lot to be, you know, um, hopeful for, but there's a lot to work, not a lot to work on, a decent bit to work on, but most of it's mental, I would say. But he's gonna be hard to beat. Let's just be honest, he's gonna be hard to beat. And, you know, shout out to all the Australians watching. Shout out to the people that have commented on my videos about the zoos. Much appreciated. Shout out to that guy that was in the comments. I was talking to him about Nikita Zoo. And he was telling me that, you know, he was he thought he had a higher ceiling than um, Tim. I respectfully disagree just because Tim's smarter. You know, that the, the, the IQ and the mind can be developed. But it takes a little bit, it's a bit slower to develop. But if you have it naturally, like I think Tim does... 
then you know it's it's a, a major advantage because you know Nikita's got the heart, he's got the power, he's got some skills as well. But it's just using the mental side, being concentrated, and just fine tuning what he's got because he's got some major ability. And um, yeah, that's it. I, I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Leave them below. If you enjoyed the video from here, hit the like button. Peace and love. I'm out of it. Boxing on the edge. Set it up. It's smart. Set it up. Yeah. That's what preserves the order of things. Left and right for oh, a massive shot. Shank! Well, Biggs, Biggs has become...